let's take a look at the events that led up to Jeff Bezos going all out in the recent post regarding National Enquirer. So number one, Bezos posted on Twitter about his divorce. Two, on the same day, National Enquirer talked about Lawrence Sanchez being the side chick. Three, Jeff Bezos started an investigation right away to see how they got hold of the personal information. Four, Jeff Bezos gets the first email threat from National Enquirer saying to stop the investigation immediately or else they will reveal more personal information. To this, Bezos does not respond to that email. 5. Text messages of Jeff Bezos sexting Lauren Sanchez is now revealed. And then they send another email to Jeff Bezos saying they have more information of Jeff Bezos' private information such as his dick pic, naked pics, etc. Jeff Bezos still doesn't reply to the emails, and he still gets more warning. 6. Bezos editors National Enquirer by revealing everything despite the risk of embarrassment. Jeff Bezos' clapback at National Enquirer is the talk of the town now. He claims two major things in regards to National Enquirer. Extortion, with the proof of other victims who have also called in to his investigator to tell them that they had to comply with National Enquirer to keep their personal information safe. The second major thing is the political plug of the murder of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi by the Saudi government. For the point of extortion, AMI immediately responded by saying that their journalists were doing a normal, regular day's job on what a journalist is usually supposed to do. Really? That's the response? You hacked his phone, revealed personal photos and conversation, and constantly sent him blackmail letters threatening to reveal more personal information. That's your definition of a regular day's job for a journalist? You gotta do better. And on the political issue, the Saudi's minister replied to keep them out of it. And it's a problem between two parties, AMI and Jeff Bezos, and they should not be involved in it, as this has nothing to do with the murder. Sounds like any time you question the Middle East based on something that happened there, the response usually is, we have nothing to do with it. I remember there was a news on FIFA 2022 where Kuwait, a Middle Eastern country, was investigated for mistreating laborers who worked on the construction site of FIFA 2022. So the Human Rights Investigation Group revealed that they had bought employees from different countries in Asia and Africa. These employees were not fed food for days. They were given very little pay and most importantly had no protective gear while working in construction sites. Many of the workers would die of hunger, overworking, and workplace injuries. The managers of FIFA were questioned, and to give you the gist of what they said, basically was, nothing's wrong, we just had a few accidents and we took care of them. The same thing is happening when investigated on a murder case. Now let's discuss the penalties for extortion. The state of Washington defines extortion as first and second degree felonies. First degree is more related to physically harming another person and taking what belongs to them, which you can face up to 10 years in prison. Whereas the second degree felony for extortion of what Jeff Bezos is claiming National Enquirer did. The sentence for this is up to five years with a fine of $10,000. On the other hand, in the state of Florida, it means threatening targets to expose secrets and the sentence for this is 10 years. AMI is a Florida state company and Jeff Bezos is in Washington state. If Bezos wins this case, in which state do you think AMI will get a sentence? And would it be as severe? What do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.